Well, hi folks, and welcome to the channel. I'm Lee, your Old Hammered host. Today we're going to talk about the legendary White Dwarf issue 77 from way back in 1986, which features not only some amazing cover art from illustrator Christos Ahelios, but also a hidden message from the White Dwarf editorial team for Games Workshop's managing director, Brian Ansel. So the message itself is not a big secret, it's just a humorous piece of GW lore, and I thought you might get a kick out of it. But first, let's bask in the glory of the cover illustration. So Christos Ahelios, who passed away just last year, was a British illustrator and concept artist whose work appeared in Heavy Metal magazine, as well as on the cover of numerous fantasy and sci-fi books. He also created the provocative cover art for White Snake's 1979 album Love Hunter, I won't be posting that here as it is not safe for work, but you can Google it if you like. Depending on your age group, you might also remember this artwork from the 1981 animated feature film Heavy Metal. Here it is on the soundtrack double album, which I bought at an actual record store in the 1980s. Now, when this movie came out, I was not old enough to attend an R-rated film by myself, but my mom drove me and six of my friends, dropped us off at the theater, and they let us in. So all I can say is, yowza! Okay, now let's take a look at the table of contents of White Dwarf issue 77. As I said, this issue contains a hidden shout-out to game and miniature designer Brian Ansel, who founded Citadel Miniatures alongside Games Workshop. He was also one of the creators of the original Warhammer fantasy game, and the author of the earlier Laserburn science fiction miniatures game, which is considered to be a spiritual predecessor to Warhammer 40k. So sometime in the mid-1980s, Brian acquired Steve Jackson's and Ian Livingstone's stake in Games Workshop, brought GW and Citadel together under the same umbrella, and became managing director of the whole shebang. And along with that came other changes, such as shifting the London operations to Nottingham. Which brings us to the May 1986 edition of White Dwarf, issue 77, which features a brief introduction by editor Ian Marsh, as well as a hidden message for the company's new managing director, Brian Ansel. Let's take a look at the intro first, and then we'll decode the message. So Ian Marsh writes, quote, As I mentioned in passing last issue, White Dwarf is moving to Nottingham. Issue 78 will be brought to you from its new offices in the heart of this historic city. For reasons of our own, I and other staff of the magazine have decided not to accompany it on this move. There'll be a fresh team working on the magazine from the next issue. Fronting them, at least for a while, is my good friend Paul Cockburn. Many of you will be familiar with his work from Imagine Magazine. I wish him well in this unenviable task of putting WD together each month. I'm sure that White Dwarf will continue to excel at its promotion of the game's hobby in Paul's hands. I won't, however, be dropping out of White Dwarf entirely and hope to be contributing to it in the future, circumstances permitting. Meanwhile, and dare I say it, enjoy my final quite remarkable issue of the magazine, Ian Marsh. Okay, so the offices of White Dwarf magazine are moving three hours away to the city of Nottingham, and most of the editorial staff is not going along for the ride. Now maybe some people just don't want to move, but I think there's more than that going on here. Because under the new regime, as I understand it, White Dwarf is getting a mandate to devote more coverage to Citadel products, including the burgeoning Warhammer Fantasy line, and perhaps the editorial staff of White Dwarf didn't think much of that, or maybe there were some other problems, but regardless, as a parting gift, they left Brian Ansel a little message encoded in the table of contents here. If you look at the items listed under Features and Departments, each one has a bold header and underneath that a description. And some of the descriptions are quite uh, creative. So we have Silly Behavior in Mega City 1, Obitzes, how I ate those Obitzes. And then somewhat lower under the department treasure chest, it says, no sexism, please. We're British. Now you could chalk all that up to an editorial staff injecting a little whimsy in the last issue they're going to produce. But if you look a little closer, you might notice that the editorial staff is employing a literary device known as an acrostic. So they have spelled out a hidden message using the first letter of each line of description under features and departments. So looking at the features and the first letter in every line of description listed under features. So we begin with an S, an O, a D, an O, an F, and an F. 
And then under departments, again looking at the first letter of each description, we have a B, an R, a Y, an A, an N, another A, another N, an S, an E, an L, and another L. String all those letters together and what do they spell? So that's not very nice, but I guess it could have been worse, and I'm sure it did burn a few bridges, but it is a little bit funny looking back 36 years to the days when Games Workshop and Citadel were a little more freewheeling and not so buttoned up and corporate. Plus, we're still talking about the prank 36 years later, so I guess that's something. So anyway, folks, that is a look at the great secret message hidden inside the table of contents of White Dwarf 77 from 1986, Please take all my information and speculation with a grain of salt, because what the heck do I know? I got most of it from Wikipedia, but uh, it sounds good to me. All right, I guess that is a wrap on today's video. Thank you, as always, for stopping by. I'll be back soon with some more tabletop wargaming nonsense. But until then, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.